Welcome, everybody. Giovanni Reads here, and this is House of the Scorpion, Chapter 26. A uh, bit of housekeeping first. Uh, there'll be an update video going into more detail, but I don't really have as much time to record as I used to. So these, this series might start to die off a bit in just the... I'll never let it die until the last chapter, but... I'll just put more detail in the update video. Just know that I don't have much time to record it these days. <clears throat> que coraje! The spirit that kid has, a man said. Matt whipped away, to, whipped away the goo dripping off his hair. He saw a pair of uniformed men approaching from amid ruined machinery and tanks. Hey kid, como te amas? What's your, what's your name? asked one of them. Matt was stumped for a moment. He certainly couldn't tell the truth. M Matt Ortega, he said, swiping the music teacher's name. You're a real fighter, the border guard said. I thought he had grabbed you when and he grabbed the backpack. Did your family go over tonight? N no, my f family. Now that the excitement was over, Matt felt the reaction set in. He hugged himself and his teeth chattered. Hey, the guard said kindly. No need to explain now. You just got the beans get out of you. G'day. I got scared watching you. Come inside where you can have a bath and something to eat. Matt followed carefully so he wouldn't slip on the cement. His body was covered in sludge and his stomach was in knots over the narrow escape. The guard led him into a large cement bathroom with showers along the walls. They gave him a brush and chunks of green soap. Take one of the clean body suits from the bin, the one of them instructed him. This is like a dream, Matt thought as he scrubbed and rescrubbed himself in the steamy shower. He'd been afraid his welcome to his salon, but these men treated him like guests. They didn't seem a bit surprised to see him. Matt found an, all, found an olive drab jumpsuit that didn't look too bad. The cloth was rough as floor brush, but it wouldn't help him fit in with the others. He could pass as human. When he emerged, he was seated at the table and given a plate of tortillas and beans by a man in black uniform with the emblem of beehive on his sleeve. Thank you, this is very nice, Matt said. Oh, we have an aristocrat here, said one of the border guards. When was the last time someone said thank you to a keeper, Raul? About the time America discovered Columbus, said Raul. He pulled up a chair. Okay, kid, what are you doing on frontera? On the frontera? Matt, between mouthfuls of beans, gave him the story Tamlin had prepared. His parents had been taken by the farm patrol. He got scared and ran back across the border. He wanted to go to San Luis. That's really tough losing your parents like that. Do you come from San Luis? said Raul. I have a, a friend there, said Matt, stumbling over how to exactly describe Maria. The man shrugged. What kind of work can you do? Work? Matt was confused. He knew how to run an opium empire, but he didn't think that was the man wanted to hear. I can play the piano, he said at last. Raoul laughed out loud. Now I know he's an aristocrat, said the other border guard. Don't get us wrong, said Raoul, noticing Matt's unhappy expression. We like art and music, but in the new West one, we don't have time for hobbies. We have to contribute to the general good of the people. It's hard, but it's fair, the other man said. So if you have a special skill, like ben balancing magnetic coils or running... Positronic purifier, please tell us. Positronic purifier, thought Matt. I don't even know what that is. He racked his brain. I studied water purification, he said at last. It wasn't quite true. Matt had toured the water purification plant. He thought he remembered enough to be useful. Those plants are automated, said Raoul. Wait, I'm getting an idea, said Raoul. Stomp on it before it gets away, the guard said. No, really, the pl plankton factory in San Luis can always use new workers. That's something like water purification. It's where the kid wants to go. The men seemed to think it was a brilliant plan, and Matt had no idea what they were talking about. Said the plankton factory sounded fine. It was in San Luis, after all. He could leave right away and find his way to the convent of Santa Clara. Matt spent the night in the guardhouse, and in the morning, Raoul took him to a large gray building with huge windows covered in iron bars. You're in luck, Chico, he said. We've got a hovercraft going to San Luis tomorrow. He unlocked a metal door that led into a dimly lit hallway. A pair of border guards lounged at a table in front of another door made of re reinforced glass. They were playing a game Matt had never seen. 
Tiny men seemed to hang in midair over the table, along with trees, buildings, and a pot of bub pot bubbling on a fire. It was the pot and fire that enchanted Matt. They were so realistic he could even hear the water splattering onto the flames. About half the tiny men were dressed in animal skins and carried spears. The other half were clad in monk's robes. The border guards wore silver gloves and moved the game pieces by waving their fingers. Another one for St. Louis, said Roel. The men grudgingly turned off the game. Where did the picture go, said Matt. Haven't you ever seen a hollow game, kid? Of course I have, Matt lied. He didn't want to arouse suspicion. Oh, I get it, the border guard said. You haven't seen this game before. Be that's because it's old. It's all the crotting government send us, sends us. Don't use language like that in front of a kid, said Roll. Sorry, said the guard. He turned, the ga turned on the game. The tiny men appeared again. See, those are cannibals, and these are the missionaries. The aim is for the cannibals to push the missionaries into the cooking pot. And the missionaries, Matt asked. They have to push the cannibals into the church, but first they have to baptize them. Matt watched, fascinated as tiny missionary held down a yelling cannibal and sprinkled water on his head. So that's what baptism was. It looks fun, he said. Sure, if you haven't played it a couple thousand times. The man turned the game off and unlocked the glass door for Raoul to Matt, for Raoul and Matt to pass through. Why are all the doors locked? Said Matt. The orderly production of resources is vital to the general good of the people. Said Raoul. That's a very weird thing to say, Matt thought. However, his attention was riveted to a room full of boys working at tables. They all stopped what they were doing and turned to look at Matt. He had never played with children. He had been he had never been to school or played sports, and he'd never had a friend his own age except Maria. The reaction of most people to him had been hatred. Thus, the experience of suddenly being thrust into a crowd of boys was like being dumped into a pool of piranhas. Matt assumed they were going to hurt him. He froze into a karate stance like Tamlin had shown him. The boys surged forward, all talking at once. What's your name? Where are they sending you? Got any money? Raul, perhaps, noticed, seeing Matt's odd expression, crowded them back. Orale, morros. Okay, kids. His name is Matt, and he needs to be left alone for a while. He's just lost his parents in the dreamland. The boys went back to the tables, but they eyed Matt curiously, and one or two of them smiled and tried to make, tried to entice him over. Matt stood next to the door while Raul walked around the room, commenting on the boys' work. Some were fitting small bits of machinery together, others wove strips of plastic into sandals. Still, others measured powder into capsules and counted and finished pills into bottles. Row was stopped by a large boy who is sanding a carved piece of wood. We don't have time for hobbies, Chacho. The orderly production of the resources is vital to the general good of the people. Crot the good of the people, muttered Chaco, still sand Chacho, still sanding the wood. If Raul was angered by this curse, and Matt had no doubt it was a curse, although he didn't know what it meant, the man didn't show it. He took the wood from Chaco's hands. Attention to the welfare of the nation is the highest virtue which a citizen can aspire. Yeah, right, said Chacho. Work is freedom. Freedom is work. It's hard, but it's fair. It's hard, but it's fair, chanted the rest of the boys. It's hard, but it's fair. They banged out the rhythm on the tables, getting louder and rowdier until Raul stilled them by raising his hands. I'm glad to see you in high spirits, he said, smiling. You might think I'm a boring old keeper, but some day you'll understand the importance of these lessons. Matt led he led Matt to the middle of the room. This boy is going to San Luis. I want you to make him welcome, and don't push him if he wants to be alone. He's just been through a terrible loss. Raul's exit was done smoothly, with the door closed and locked almost before Matt was aware of it. Why did they have to be locked in? What was a keeper? It was the second time Matt had heard the word. He glared at the boys, whose work slowed now that they were being wa weren't being watched. El Patron said it was always important to establish your authority before anyone had a chance to question it. Matt, wa Matt walked towards the tables as though he owned the place. Wanna join us? A skinny little kid who is making up pills. Said a skinny little kid who is making up pills. Matt looked grandly around the room. He nodded curtly. You can help if you want, the kid offered. My advice is to sit on your butt while you have the chance, said Chacho from across the room. The big boy was twisting plastic strips into sandals. Matt walked slowly to the sandal-making table. 
El Patron said you should never look anxious or needy. People always took advantage of those who were anxious or needy. Why is that? inquired Matt, looking down the tangle of plastic strips. Because the keepers are going to work your butt off tomorrow, said Chacho. He was a large, rough-looking boy with big hair, big hands, and black hair slicked back like the feathers on a duck. I thought I was going to San, San Luis. Oh, you are. And so am I in Felid... Fidelito. Chacho pointed out the skinny boy who looked about eight years old. But you can bet we're going to work before we get on the hovercraft, while we're on the hovercraft, and after we get off the crotting hovercraft. You'll see. Matt wandered around and watched the various chores the boys were doing. He settled by Phil... Fidel... <sighs> can never pronounce his name. Fidelidio. Who is a... Ecstatic to gain approval of, from the newcomer. After a while, Matt could see why. Fidelito was the newest kid in the room, and so of course everyone pushed him around. What, what kind of pills are those? Matt asked. Vitamin B, said Fidelito. Fidelito. They're supposed to be good for you, but if you eat ten or twelve of them, you'll get sick. What a dope, Chacho said. Why would anybody eat a dozen vitamin pills? I was hungry, Fidelito said. Matt was startled. You mean they don't feed you here? Sure they do, if you produce enough work. I'm just not very fast. You're not very big, Matt said, feeling sorry for the earnest little boy. It doesn't matter, Fidelito explained. Everyone's supposed to have the same output. As long as we're here, we're equal. It's hard, but it's fair, intoned Chacho from across the room. Their boys picked up the chant, banging the tables until the whole room rocked. One of the border guards told them to shut up through the loudspeaker. Did you see your parents taken? asked Fidelito with the boy cud. Cayate, shut up, let him get used to it, several voices cried, but Matt raised his hand for silence, as he'd seen Raul do. To his great pleasure, the boys obeyed. There were really something to El Patron's methods of gra gaining power. It happened yesterday morning, he improvised. He said, improvising. Matt remembered the crowd of illegals who had distracted the farm patrol. I saw a flash of light. Papa shouted for me to go back to the border. I saw Mama fall down, and a man grabs my backpack. I slipped out of the straps and ran. I know what the flash of the light was, said a boy face. It's kind of a gun. It kills you dead. Me Mama. His voice choked, and he didn't say any more. Fidelito put his head down on the table. Have, have other people lost their parents, stammered Matt. He'd been about to create a dramatic story about his escape. Now it seemed like a heartless thing to do. We all have, said Chacho. Guess you haven't figured it out yet. This is an... Orfantorio, an orphanage. The state is our family now. That's why the border guards wait, and wait along the frontera. They catch kids of rockheads who made a run for it and turn them over to the keepers. Mi abuelita wasn't a rockhead, said Filadito from the cradle of his arms. Your grandma... Oh, heck, Filadito, said Chacho. She was too old to run to the United States. You know that. But I'm sure she loved you. He added, he added as the little boy sniffled. So you see how it is, Chacho told Matt. We're par all part of the crowding production of resources for the crowd of the gooding people. Crowding good of the people. Don't let Raul hear you, someone said. I'd like a tattoo on my butt for him to read, said Chacho, going back to a tangle of plastic strips on the table. End of chapter 26, and holy crap, that was a bad reading. But you know what? I don't feel like going through a second take, so I'm just going to stop there. Anyway, keep an eye out for that update video. It should be up very soon after this one. I might even upload it before. I don't know. Either way, check the update video. If I upload it, uh, if I upload it before, I'll put the link in the description. Either way, I might add the link to the description. Either way, have a good day, and I will see you all next time.